Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. First up today, we have to touch on this tweet from the Kilowatts. He got a ride in an Uber owned by Tesla. You read that right, my Uber driver told me the Model 3 he is driving is not owned by Hertz, but rather a pilot program being run by Tesla, like a Tesla network, with a small number of highly ranked Uber drivers in Cali. He continued, take this with a grain of salt, one of us could have been mistaken, but he was asking direct questions about who owned the car and who was paying for the bill. Apparently, he only pays supercharging and Tesla is providing the car free of charge for now. One possible reason for Tesla to do this would be to get ride hailing specific driving patterns and driver behavior that regular Tesla owners wouldn't necessarily have. And I need to be clear here, plenty of people still think this was just some form of miscommunication and that Hertz actually owns the vehicles in their partnership with Uber. For that reason, I do not want to explore this any further until we get some more data points that this might actually be the beginnings of that Tesla network. If you're one of the many that like collecting these Hot Wheel Tesla vehicles, they just released a new Roadster version. This may only be available in Walmart in Canada, but the rumor is it might be released in North America in the coming weeks. A pro tip, you can sometimes find these on Amazon or eBay rather than regularly going to Target or Walmart so I will link a few that are available in the description below if you're interested. On Reddit, from an approved user and a high quality contributor, viewing tire pressures in the Tesla app is likely coming soon. In case you've been waiting for a Tesla shop restock, the Gen 2 mobile connector bundle is now available again, as are the Gen 2 NEMA adapters, including the 1450. Here we have the Tesla hype for the day, a new patent for integrated energy absorbing castings. Much is being made about if this is a true single piece casting, so what's going on? In the very first line of the abstract, it tells us an integrated energy absorbing system of a vehicle with a front integrated energy absorbing casting and a back integrated energy absorbing casting. So they're talking about the FUB and the RUB. Each front and back casting is a single unified casting that makes up the integrated energy absorbing system. Hang in there. More specifically, the subject matter relates to vehicle body components, which are cast as a unitary single piece and provide energy absorbing crash protection from vehicular impacts. So from here, a lot of people were talking about, well, there it is, cast as a unitary single piece. However, let's keep going. In this patent, they do talk about multiple embodiments of how they could integrate these energy absorbing castings. Figure one, you're looking at a perspective view of a front integrated energy absorbing casting and a back integrated energy absorbing casting installed into a vehicle frame. What you have here is multiple single piece castings being integrated into the vehicle's frame. So not technically a single piece full body cast. So here's where it gets interesting. The disclosed technology relates to cast energy absorption systems for the front and back of a vehicle that can be integrated into the frame or be part of a larger monolithic casting. Yes, this is subject to interpretation, but what this is saying to me is that you can either take the front and the back casting and integrate it into the frame to make this one unit, or it can be part of one larger monolithic casting, which would be, in my opinion, a single piece full body cast. Continuing, traditional energy absorbing systems use processes like spot welding, seam welding, riveting, bolting, adhesive bonding, etc. The technology in this patent enables removing the need for those disclosed processes by integrating the energy absorbing system with part or all of the backup structure through a single casting process. At this point, a few things to keep in mind. One, this is a patent. This does not guarantee anything for future production. Two, in my initial reading of the patent, I do not think this is Tesla coming out and saying, hey, we're doing a true full single piece casting for the next vehicle, whether it be the $25,000 Tesla or the Cybertruck. 
People asking about, is this possibly for Cybertruck? I would say it's unlikely just given the images in the patent. To be clear though, I do think the door is at least left open to a future larger monolithic true single piece casting. However, that type of technology could still be years if not a decade away and it brings with it its own set of challenges, which we all have to keep in mind. I've linked the patent below if you want to get into the details. And as always at this point, let me know how are you interpreting this wording? Next up, it looks like Tesla might be offering annual payments instead of the monthly and offering a slight discount for doing so, specifically for things like premium connectivity. Looking at the code, we see it right here, save on annual subscription. If you go back to December of last year, Zach asked Elon about this very thing to which Elon said, good idea. And in future updates, Tesla may be offering the ability to turn on Climate Keeper directly from the app. As of now, it can only be turned on from within the car. Electric added, you may also get the ability to interact with notifications like when you're preheating or charging your car, and they shared this screenshot. Morgan Stanley says they see autonomous vehicles as overhyped and more than a decade out. They specifically mention possibly two decades until we see true robotaxi adoption. This is actually a bullish note. You just wouldn't know it from the headline. Reason is they say that their $1,300 price target has no value for fully autonomous vehicles. That's bullish. Also wanted to share this because I just wish Elon would stop giving timelines for solving FSD. Just tell people it's a problem that's never been solved in the history of humanity and it'll be solved when it's solved. That would alleviate so many issues and so much negativity. If you'd like to see the essence of Tesla in one tweet, Kramer said, Elon, I wonder how you could preserve in the face of this level of negativity from people. Elon simply said product over marketing. The Boring Company has submitted a proposal for a 6.2 mile underground system in Miami. This would initially have seven stations and move 7,500 passengers per hour with the ability to scale to more than 15,000 per hour. The estimated cost is 185 to $220 million and its expected construction would take fewer than three years if the permitting process was expedited. And this proposal does recommend several potential extensions to the initial 6.2 mile loop. As of now, the city is still trying to obtain funding. I thought this one data piece from a Cox Automotive survey was interesting. Right now, about 17% of Americans are not aware that Tesla offers an EV. We still have a lot of work to do. A quick look at Tesla stock for the week. Today, down about 3% at the time of recording to 844 a share. On the week, down 1.87%. We've been talking about it for weeks now. There is so much macro uncertainty with interest rate hikes and supply chain issues in Russia and Ukraine and all kinds of things. So once again, Tesla is always subject to the macro space. And to keep today short and sweet, you guys know what I say about when Tesla stock approaches the 200 day moving average. When you zoom out, historically, that has been the best time to buy Tesla stock and you don't always get those opportunities. So when they come around, if you have the cash available, not financial advice, but I personally am buying. Once again, I've said it before, Tesla stock might go below 800 a share. It might hover in the 700s if things go south with the macro space, but as a long-term investor, who really cares? And I'll send you off into the weekend with a Chrome delete clip. This man has been killing it with the Tesla prototypes. Please like the video if you did. Have a wonderful and safe weekend and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. A lot of people are wondering what it would be like if Tesla put an app store in their vehicles. So this is a concept I put together on my iPad, but I actually think it'd be really interesting. So let's imagine you're on a road trip and maybe you're stopped at a supercharger and your, your travel partner decides they'd like to get a bite to eat. Well, you can bring up a menu here, full screen, and each of you can just order what you want from it and then the vehicle can not only take you to go pick it up, it can also be charged to the vehicle directly, just like supercharging, so you never have to get your wallet out. Um, I think that opens the door to some really interesting possibilities. Uh, I think certain functionality would need to be enabled only when the vehicle is parked, so maybe you're watching a TED Talk while you're charging, and when you hit the road, maybe it transitions to an audio version automatically, so you can keep listening to what you're just watching. Um, I think integrations are gonna be really interesting, so, you know, an app like Audible here, once we get that installed, um, you know, it's the same same Audible app that you know and love, but now that it's on your vehicle, it's integrated now with these audio sources. And that means that, you know, it tucks away into this little bottom bar here. You've got access to these quick controls. Um, I do think there's room for exploration around putting things on the map. So things like uh, weather data or air quality. I also think there's, there's room for exploration 
uh, in widgets. So maybe you could install, you know, at a glance information or quick controls of some sort. And then when you wanted to hide them away, maybe you just swipe them out of the way. So what do you think? Is this um, something you think Tesla is going to do? Do you think it'll be like this? And uh, what, what kind of apps would you like to see?